Hello, and welcome to another ZBrush tutorial. Real quick, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and like this video to help my channel out. We're gonna jump right into sculpting fabric in ZBrush. If you don't already have a base model to work with, you can go up to the light box, go to project, and there's a couple of base models in there, or you can go over to tool, and there's even more for you to work with from there. So if we have our base model, Really, we just have to go onto Google Images or Pinterest and find a reference image because that's the most important thing that's gonna help us figure out how to sculpt these shapes, and I'll explain the patterns once we get into it. Once you have your base mesh out and selected, just hold control, go over to your brush over here and select the mask lasso tool so that when you hold control, you can draw a mask in whatever shape you want with the lasso. Once you've masked off the part of your mesh that you want, you can go over to Subtool, go all the way down to the bottom to Extract, set your thickness to something like 0 .003 and hit Extract, and if it looks like the right thickness, then you can go ahead and hit Accept. Once you have your shirt here, just make sure you clear your mask, and now we're gonna get into sculpting the patterns of the fabric. The first thing I'm gonna do is press X to turn off symmetry, because symmetry kind of destroys the natural look of how these wrinkles are gonna be, and I'm gonna take my standard brush and use that for the base for most of my wrinkles and how we get started here. So something to note about wrinkles is that wrinkles travel in these patterns. Some people call them zigzag patterns, but I like to think of them as more of a forked pattern. If I zoom in on this reference image here, you can see that up here near the armpit, you get this sort of forked pattern here where there's a thin end here and then it branches off into two parts like this. So this fork creates this shape going this way and then it connects to the next part which then forks off in a different direction. And it kind of creates this circular dimple shape in between all of these little forks that connect together. But I like to think of it this way because then there's one side and it forks off into two branches that then connect to the next part. You don't have to get super detailed with your sculpting. A lot of the time you just have to identify the major points and where all the big shapes are first, and then you can go from there. So I'm gonna start with the armpits and we're just going to take our standard brush, make our brush relatively small, and just start sculpting in that shape of the wrinkle. Now, once I draw my first shape, I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and trace along both sides of the shape that I just created and then kind of smooth it all down. And that just sort of pronounces that wrinkle shape a little bit more and makes it stand out a little bit better. The next shape that I'm seeing here is this part that comes up and over from underneath the armpit. So that's gonna travel up and over here this. I can make my brush a little bit bigger and just sort of trace this shape the way that I want it and then hold alt trace along both sides to make it a little bit taller on top smooth it down and now we notice this fork shape that I was talking about in here so it starts at the armpit as one piece that comes out and wraps around and it forks off in two different directions here so that would make it come this way and then it forks off and up in this direction and then I can hold alt and trace in between all those shapes smooth everything down a little bit. And now that same forked shape begins right above that and comes down and over. So as I'm looking at this, I'm just trying to pay attention to how many branches I'm seeing. So I see one branch here connected to another branch here, connected to the base of another branch that goes the uh, opposite direction. This should be forking out in this sort of direction. And we're just gonna follow this same basic pattern and making sure to hold alt and trace around my shapes every time that I make a new fork. This part comes up here a little bit. Trace around that, smooth it down. And if it doesn't look like you have enough geometry, what you can do is just hold control and press D on your keyboard to subdivide your mesh. And now I'm at about 66,000 active points, which is pretty high, but it's gonna give me a decent amount of detail as we're sculpting. And the thing to remember about fabric is you have to think about where it's compressed and where it expands. So. When fabric is compressed, it pinches, and when it expands, it's obviously more loose and not as pinched. So we can think of it in this way, the armpit is gonna be an area of compression, and as it travels outward, it opens up and expands and becomes a little bit wider and softer. Next, I'm gonna look at the big shapes here. I have one large shape that comes down here from across this side of the chest down and over to that side. And before I get too carried away, I'm just gonna take my move brush and make this shirt sort of in the shape of my reference image so that I can kind of work accurately from there. Now with my standard brush, I'll just make my brush a little bit bigger this time and I'm gonna bridge this big wrinkle that comes from this side of the chest over and down, over here, and then sort of smooth it down. 
And then I'll hold Alt and trace along both sides of it to make that edge stand up a lot higher on the top. Make it look like it's really popping. Every once in a while you're going to have to grab your move brush and just sort of pull your mesh around because the clothing is eventually going to intersect with your mesh and you're just going to have to kind of fix it as you go. Now I'm seeing this sort of shape over here is coming down and across. And again, this is a perfect example of that forking pattern. One big piece here and one big piece here and they both meet over here on the side. So one large fork here that comes down and over like this at a nice swooping sort of angle. And then a smaller branch that comes in like that. And then I can just hold alt and trace the, around the base of these and making sure that where it's pinching, it's thinner. And where it expands out up here, it's a little bit wider on the tops. So just paying attention to these patterns can really help you get a more believable look and feel for the fabric on your characters. Just following this general guideline, looking for those forked patterns and where the fabric bends and where the fabric contracts. So starting over on this side, there's another large crease that comes over to that side. And I'm just blocking in all of the big shapes first. The reason I'm doing this so quickly is because it's important to really just try to get everything in place first. And then we'll go in and do details later. Now when we get over to this side, I'm just going to create sort of this. I'm going to follow the pattern of this, how the fabric is shaped on that side. And then I'll fork off in this direction and this direction here. And then I'll hold alt and trace in between all my shapes again to make everything stand out a lot more. And already we're starting to get that sort of nice wrinkle look on our fabric here. It's pretty messy up here, but we'll go in and we'll clean up all that in just a minute. Next, I want to do the other side of the armpit over here. So I'm going to look at my reference here. It kind of comes over at a sharp angle and then goes up. So maybe this comes over here like this. And then from the armpit, we'll just go up and try to connect those parts there. And then there's a couple of wrinkles coming down from this side of the chest here, down that wrap around this side. And then a smaller one here. We'll trace those shapes. And some of these wrinkles get really, really fine and really small. So we're just gonna kind of fill in all those shapes. Now the thing to be really careful of is making sure that your mesh doesn't look really lumpy like it is right here. And obviously I'm going really fast for this demonstration, but I'm going a little too fast and it's making it look really uneven like this. So if your mesh is starting to look really bumpy and raised up like that, you can just take something like the H polish brush and just kind of run along the tops of these wrinkles and just sort of flatten them down a little bit or take trim dynamic or some brush like that to just trim down the tops so that they don't look so raised up and so bumpy. Now I'm gonna to try to create this little wrinkle fold over here and kind of how this pattern is. The shirt is pulling in this direction. I'm gonna to have to take my move brush first and just move that out and use my move brush to kind of push that into place like this. And I'll smooth it all out so that it looks a little less lumpy and we can just re-sculpt some of those wrinkles. Down and over. And looking at it from multiple angles, making sure that I'm not just getting a flat view from the front only. And another wrinkle here like this. This could even fork off from this. And then this could fork off over here and these could connect over into another one here. So again, just sticking to that basic pattern, just thinking in branches. There's always going to be one branch and then it branches off into two separate sections. The next step after I've traced out all of my major wrinkles like this is I like to use my Damien standard brush and just zoom in and look at the patterns that you have going on and trace along the low points at the bottom of the wrinkles. And this is really important to pay attention to because if you do it wrong, it's not gonna look believable. So just look at how the fabric expands in certain parts where it's wider and where it's more pinched in other parts and just use your Damien standard, go along, hold alt to trace along the top edge of the high points and then just use the regular brush without holding alt to trace down and in where the fabric is pushing down and in. And eventually you sort of see these shapes and patterns and I don't wanna hold alt and trace along the top of every single edge because it's gonna create this sharp sort of look. And if I look at my reference image, not all of these raised edges are sharp. There's a very soft one here. So obviously I wouldn't hold alt and trace along this because that's a very soft shape, but I would do it on this one on the side here because that's a sharper shape and the branch that connects to it there these are sharper edges. And now I'm just gonna zoom in on these on the other side and hold Alt and trace along a couple of these to make them stand out a little more and then smooth them down very gently. And just try to find places like this 
where I can really accentuate those creases in the fabric and just trying very lightly to just outline the bottom of those folds so that they really stand out more in certain places. And because we use the standard brush, our shapes should be nice and round. So it's easier to get that folding effect when we go back and trace it like this. Hold Alt, trace along here, make that edge a little bit sharper. So it's really just going to take some time and practice and looking at reference. Reference is the biggest help when it comes to sculpting anything. Even professionals say that they use reference all the time in all of their projects. It's super important to be able to have good reference and to understand what it is that you want. So depending on the type of fabric that you have for your t-shirt, or if it's a sweater or a thicker coat or a scarf, the fabric type is gonna be different, so it's going to be thicker, it's going to behave differently. So all of those elements are super important to pay attention to when you're putting together reference for your project. As you can see here on the pants, I did the exact same thing that we did with that shirt there. I just tried to stick to those zigzag forked shaped patterns. And just thinking about you know where the compression is, the fabric is probably more bunched up up here closer to the top of the leg and coming out like this. And this fold is gonna come around the back like this. And then just taking my Damien standard and tracing along the bottoms and holding Alt and tracing along the sharp creases on the tops. And very quickly, you can just start to create these wrinkles and patterns in sort of a believable way. One other thing that I wanna point out here, and I'm gonna use one of the cloth brushes that ZBrush has to kind of show you this. If I trace out a little shape here and I extract it off of the arm and hit accept, if I press B, C, K on my keyboard for the cloth hook brush, if I just make my brush really big and I pull it up this way and I scrunch up that piece like a piece of fabric, you can actually see that pattern that I'm talking about. There's a single piece over on this side and it branches off into two forks this way and then it connects to this piece that does the exact same thing on this other side of here. One larger piece forks off into two pieces and in between where those forks connect it's just creating this circular pattern with a dimple in the middle but it's almost like a chain link sort of look to it so there's a circle here and there's a, a link that connects the pieces here if i turn it this way it does the same thing there's that oval circle sort of shape and then a link that connects the two together so you almost have this like chain link effect of how the fabric scrunches up around a cylinder or the arm uh, and it all depends on how the fabric is being pushed and where it's pinching and where the wrinkles begin and where the wrinkles end. So using this same logic, I can think about the body as a cylinder, the arms, the legs, they're all cylinders. And if the fabric is moving up or down on those cylinders, it's going to behave in a different way. So if I were to take my cloth hook brush again and move it up like this, it's kind of showing me an example of how the fabric does this. I don't know, these cloth brushes do a good job, but they're not the best and they're not gonna give you the most realistic result. Even though they look like they create realistic folds, it's not super believable because the pattern isn't there. The brush doesn't detect the pattern. You can detect the pattern better than the brush can. So now that we've gone over and done all of this sculpting, let's review all of the steps that we went over from the start. First, go onto Google Images or Pinterest and find a reference image of whatever kind of clothing it is that you're trying to make. Then take your base mesh and trace out the shape of the shirt on it and go down to Subtool, Extract, and Extract it at a lower thickness and hit Accept. Once you extract your shirt off of your base mesh, then you hold Control and press D on your keyboard to subdivide up for a higher amount of geometry. Now you start identifying all of the major wrinkle shapes that you can see around your shirt. Start tracing them out and then hold Alt and trace along the sides of those shapes that you make to make them raised and stand up more. Start looking for those fork shaped patterns like I was talking about and holding alt and tracing along to really make those patterns stand out even more. Start identifying harder and softer folds and larger folds and start tracing out all of those big shapes. Now that you've traced out all of the major shapes with your standard brush, go back and use your Damien standard brush to carve in along the bottom edges and holding alt and tracing along the top edges to create those nice thicker creases to make your fabric stand out and be more believable. You can also go back with your move brush and just look at places where gravity would push or pull the fabric around more and just grab the bottoms of those folds, pull them down a little bit more to try and accentuate that effect. It's important to back your camera way off and look at your object from far away. If you look at it from far away, you can see the detail from a different perspective. And sometimes you'll notice things about it that you don't think are as believable and maybe find some things that you need to change. The major thing that helps with thinking about fabric is finding points where it scrunches up or points where it's pinched together 
and then finding the points where it's looser and seeing how the patterns connect from one point to the other and where those forks come together and connect and branch off into other separate forks. And that will kind of help you identify how the fabric behaves and it all depends on the type of fabric. And before too long, you've already got yourself some nice sculpted wrinkles. Just hit the BPR button in the top right to see how the light catches the shadows and see if it's believable or not. And that will really help you identify what the shirt looks like as you're sculpting. So just keep using reference images and keep practicing. Try to sneak in a shirt or some pants on the next character that you do and just keep trying to practice every time that you get the chance. That is all the time that I have for this video. I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below to help my channel out. Be sure to turn on notifications to see when I come up with new stuff. But until next time.